To talk a little bit more about the GOP debate this morning, we are joined by a familiar face here at WMUR, political analyst Scott Spradling. Thanks for coming in, first of all. Waking up on a Sunday morning, I appreciate it. Love it, Sean. Uh, talk about the debate last night. Everybody wants to know who are the big winners and who are the big losers. Who do you think sure. did well? I'll tell you what, last night was the night for the governors. John Kasich, Chris Christie, and Jeb Bush all did very, very well. I think they overperformed what the expectations were, which is always good at the very end. I think their performances were so solid. I think it's leaving voters with another head scratching, what do we do now situation. This field and the outcome may have really gotten into doubt. Yeah, we want to talk a little bit about the losers in this too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people saying that Marco Rubio is taking these shots from Chris Christie. How did he do in this? Rubio, Rubio came out of Iowa surging, doing extremely well, and he needed to do well in the debate last night. The expectations were high because every debate performance has been so solid for him, and he simply failed to deliver. Chris Christie turned the debate into a uh, review of experience, and he's been hitting Rubio on the campaign trail about being the Republicans' version of an Obama, a first-term freshman senator with no accomplishments, and Rubio got that question head-on and did not deliver a good answer. Uh, do you recall in the past an election this wide open? You mentioned before now voters might be even more undecided. Oh, I totally agree. I think after last night, for whatever factor that debate, and I believe it'll be a big one, will have on the outcomes, you went from a two- to three-person race to now suddenly four or five options because the governors did so well you could put those names in a hat and have a, a completely different outcome. Uh, a lot of people talk about Donald Trump after these debates. Last night didn't seem like it was the true Donald Trump, maybe a little bit subdued, right? Yeah, I feel like uh, his performance was reminiscent of a person who doesn't uh, want to lose, playing not to lose a game. He was more careful, he was more measured and reserved. He obviously had a few answers that will, will be memorable and he slammed Cruz at the very end. Yeah. But the reality is I don't think too many people are talking about him first thing this morning. They're talking about Chris Christie, they're talking about Marco Rubio. That doesn't help Donald Trump. Uh, talk a little bit about the undecided out there, sure. as you mentioned before, just days before the election. How much does an event like this change their minds? How important is it in, in making up their minds? The one thing we definitely know is that voters wait till the last minute. Upwards of half in this cycle are saying they remain undecided going into Tuesday. That means last night's performance was hugely, immensely important for all seven candidates on that stage. So I believe the undecideds might be a little bit more undecided because now they have a wider, more broad sense of the field, and there really are four or five people that could easily range up to second or third place, possibly even be a spoiler for Donald Trump. When you hear about major candidates like Hillary Clinton heading to Flint, Michigan, right before the primary, Ben Carson not coming right here after Iowa, how important is New Hampshire to some of these candidates? Is it as important as it's always been? Not only is it important, Sean, in the final days and in the final closing hours of the campaign, but I think we're seeing over and over again, and John Kasich's a really good example, you have to be here. You have to invest the time and energy. You have to meet face to face with voters and take their questions. It truly can and does make a difference. All right, Scott Spradling, thank you very much.